Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to Conan Exiles with Casbeard. And we're at the new base, or the site of the new base, overlooking the King Crocodile, the world boss, who's sitting down there feeling rather grumpy because he can't get up here and get at us. <laughs> tough, mate, tough. Right, I've been a little bit busy here. First of all, I'll show you what I've done across on this side. Um, for now, uh, all that I've done is I've put this little facing in here, which just stops the likes of the hyenas uh, coming through and getting into the base. We'll get the actual door and what have you onto there later. Um, I've built up this area here for putting in a building. I don't know what yet. Um, and I've started facing off these foundation blocks uh, with the um, reinforced stone uh, fence foundations. Now, I'm still using the sandstone foundations behind them because we've got that ledge of stone down there, which means that attacks from ground level can't actually get at the um, the structure here. It's really as much for um, decoration as anything. Well, it's obviously defensive, but it's it's there for uniformity of appearance. Let's let's put it that way. Right down here, I've built this platform out a little bit, and yeah, there's some stairs there now. I just jump across onto here. We can come up here and we can go into um, the top of the gatehouse. You can see I've got it all roofed over. And we've got a, a trap door there as a murder hole to shoot down at anybody attacking the gate. And I'm thinking what I might have to do is extend it across with a second one on the next floor tile. Um, because there's only me that will be able to shoot down there. Our, um, our NPCs won't actually shoot down there and hit anything. I know that from experience. Come on, close that door. Thank you. Right, out here. We've got this part of the platform is done complete with our crenellations and stuff. We'll go out and have a look at it in a moment from the outside. For us on this side, you can't actually get onto the next platform from up here. You actually have to go down. And you have to come in this way to get to it. And as you can see, I've got a bit of a platform here for shooting down into the area where people might be attacking the gate. Like that. Right. Um, and out here, we've got this little archery platform, which the outside wall appears to be not quite finished. I can see gaps of daylight underneath those crenellations. We'll check it from the outside, because it's possible that I didn't finish it. It was a busy time. There was things to be done. Right, so the main gates are in place. We've got the double hinged gates here. And out here we've got the drawbridge, which as you can see drops down onto this. And if I just... Can I get the drawbridge to pull up from there? Not yet. Okay. Um... Uh, looks like all the facings did get done. This this will bear the brunt of any attacks during a purge, this area here. So it's important that this area was built with the tier 3 building materials. And as you can see, I've tried to keep it off the ground as much as possible. So that even if they knock out these facings here... They're still not actually getting at the wall, which is supported on top of this uh, stone. From this point here, around to here, 
is the only place they can do any real damage. And if they get up here and they get down into there, then they can attack the base of the walls. The same on that side. So, by and large, that's the front gate done. It's functional right now. I mean, there's a few oddments that I want to get done. You know, I want to get my um, lighting into place and torches and stuff against night attacks, all that sort of stuff. And out here, we've still got a few facings to put on, which are not urgent, and I can do them at pretty much any time. The hyenas have not... The hyena that was feeding on this antelope has not respawned, nor has the one that was feeding on the antelope up there, so... It looks like they're going to stay back away from the walls, which is good, because it saves the pain of having to defend them all the time. So, the drawbridge just comes up. Come on, then. There we go. And obviously during a purge I would raise that drawbridge. Gives a second gate to, to combine with the, the double doors gate. But for the rest of the time I can leave the drawbridge down. Because it can only be operated from here. There's no um, way to operate it from the far end and these doors become the primary defense while the drawbridge is down it's the one weakness of the drawbridge um, it's really it works best on a multiplayer server it's not so good on solo play um, but it's pretty okay so we've got the main gatehouse by and large finished um, we've got this interior area to do, and then we've got the interior buildings to get done. So it's a case of hammering on with these sandstone foundations, getting them to cover this area. Now, we're not going to be able to put them right across on here. We we'll, might be able to get some of it across, so sort of like here. Where there'll be enough support to just extend the floor a little bit. But once we get across to this end of it, it's not going to be able to get right across there without dropping pillars down into that pond. Which then puts a weakness because down there could get purged. So I want to keep the focus of the purge being up here and particularly on the two gates which as the only points of contact that they've got from outside of the base. I will have to do something over here um, in terms of setting the overall perimeter of the base. And what I will probably do is I will probably embed foundation blocks into the cliff faces to create a walkway coming around that side of the opening so that we've got pretty much a, a full running track going round this um, collapsed cave roof. And of course we have to think about everything that's going on over there. Right, now, I'm going to crack on with these sandstone foundations, creating the, the floors uh, to get all of the floor levels done. I don't want to be building direct onto um, the, the natural rock I want to have nice even floors for all the um, structures so I'll get on with that and I'll see you back here once I've got that done it's just as I've done many a time is just batter up a load of rocks and a load of trees collect all the stone and timber make all of those fence foundations and just lay them across and get all the floor levels done so that we can then get on with the main or the, the main feature structures, shall we call it. So, see you in a few minutes. Don't go away.
Okay, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. And uh, you can see here that I've got a fair bit achieved. And I wanted to show you this bit before I pressed on any further. You can see here on this alignment, I've suddenly switched to the wedges. And the reason for that was obviously to get across that corner. But then when you come here, you can see a more obvious reason for it by putting that 60 degree twist in the flooring lines. I can get a nice straight line across there. It's a shame I couldn't get it right up to the edge, but I'm not too worried about that. Um, it, they would have been sticking out underneath like those ones over there on that corner if I'd got them right onto the edge. So this way it gives a nice clean finish to them. And one line of wedges going all the way up there. And then I can carry on with the square ones here. Which is what I'm going to do. I'm going to carry on putting the square ones into place. Going along here. Just like this. And yeah, I'm getting dry. I need a drink, I know. Sorry mate, let me just get this line of bits in place and then we'll give you a drink. Oops, that one's jumped for some reason. It doesn't want to go in. It wants to go there, but it doesn't want to go in here. Uh, looks like those stones might be blocking it, so we'll have to pick them up. This is what I was saying to you a couple of episodes ago. You can't always get them to go in if you've got stones on the ground. See, it's just not playing at all, is it? So let's just have a quick drink. From the water skin and munch a fish. Carry on. We need to change something over. Uh, where's my pick? There's my pick. Swap it for the bow for now. We'll get in here. Out. We'll get that stone hacked out. We'll let all of that despawn. And we'll try again. Okay, you don't want to do that. Let's try it from up here now. Okay, now sometimes when it does this, the only thing that you can do, and it seems absolutely stupid, but it has worked before for me, is to run some distance away and then run back. Hello, missus. You enjoying the shade there? Get some work done. Um, run back like this. And... There you go. See? Went in that time. We just keep on doing this until all the floor areas are done. I'm going to have to go get some more stone and timber in a minute. Because we're about to run out of these square foundations. I've got a little bit in the cupboards. Um, but in total I don't think there's enough to finish this. And I'm just thinking if we put that one in... Take that one out, mine this stone. Um. Need to mine out all these little bits. get those two in so that one doesn't respawn. We'll get these ones mined up. That gives us a little bit extra stone for making some more of these. Oh, 
And that one still hasn't, even though I hit it with a pick. Now it has. Right, so oh go and get some more of the bits out of the um out of the case, out of the cupboard. We'll see if we can get that done. Right, so we've got 115 stone. That's 440. We'll move that bit of spoiled meat down there out of the way. Um, not sure if we're going to run out of stone or wood first. I think we'll run out of stone first there. So... We then go into here and search on sandstone. And find the foundations. Right, we are, right, we can make 12, is that all? Yeah, we did run out of stone before wood. Okay, so... We'll have to pick up some more stone to make some more of these. Okay, what I'll do is I'll just, I'll cut the video here and come back in a second once I've got all of these made up. You don't want to sit watching these getting made. Um, and then we'll carry on with that floor as best we can. Okay, right, so we've made them. Uh, we were able to get a total of 36. We already had three left over, so that's 33 we were able to make. Using all the materials that we had in stock, let's just put that wood back in there. So that we got that bit of wood left, but we got no stone at all left. Um, let's get these across. I'm not sure how many we've got on a row. A little bit less now because of that stone kicking out there. Uh, let's see how many we can do. Number five. Stone needs knocked out. Come on, despawn. All these little ones as well. And we've run out again. We need another two to finish that row. And then we'll probably get one more row in. And then we'll need to think about using the wedges to continue on up that slope there. Right, so I don't know how much stone I managed to pick up. Let's have a look. Uh, 52, I can make one. So I just need to go and mine down one of those rocks quickly. And we'll pick up those little loose bits. Because they'll all help. We need a total of 70 pieces of stone to make two of the square foundations. Plus a few bits of wood, of course. Right, so if I break up these rocks... And 
fact, that gives us 105, which will let us make three of the square foundations. Because we might need an extra one to wrap around that rock over there. It was not intentional to to get to that many. I was only aiming to to get the the 70. There's another little stone down there. They're respawning rather fast, these. Pick it up, pick it up, pick it up. Thank you. Right, we need to get some of the wood out of the cabinet. I think this guy's a wannabe ballerina, you know. He's a closet ballerina. The way that he keeps jumping and prancing around. Right, so we just need to pick them up for a minute. We'll put that iron stone in there. Um, escape that, number five. Three is the maximum we can make. Then we'll put that wood back in the, the cupboard and go get this row of foundations finished. Whoops. We did need the third one just to get to there. Doesn't need to wrap around there. That's a natural end point for it, which is good. Okay, now I'll I'll finish this off um, off camera. Just give him a drink. And a bit of fish. Well, I'll finish this side off off camera, but I'll come back on camera when I'm ready to do the um, gate up there. What I want to do, just to finish this video off, um, without it getting too long, is just to discuss this little bit here. And this is where I really do wish that um, the devs would give us the 45 degree foundation and wall pieces. Because I can't put a wedge in there, or one of these because you can see down there it doesn't fill the gap and I can't get a second one in if you look that they would be overlapping and we can't have overlapping pieces since the update a while ago what we do need is we need a 45 degree wedge to, to fill basically a half square but corner to corner half square to go into locations like that and that one there and that one there just to give a nice flush face across there similar to the angle that we've got across there um, it would be really good if they would do that but anyway that's going to be enough for today a short episode today um, I'll finish off that flooring across there and build it round to where we're going to put the gate um, and then I'll pick it up on camera putting in the gate at the far side for using that uh, cliffside path to get round to that um, exile village that's round the corner. I think it's a Dogs of the Desert one. And in the next episode, we'll put that gate in and we'll probably put the small gate in up here, um, get those done, and then start thinking about putting our interior buildings in before we start building up and thinking about what we're going to put on the top of those rock stacks up there. Meanwhile, the missus and I are going to have a starlit barbecue. Hello, darling. Um, perfect location for it. But notice the temperatures in here. If you look at my temperature gauge at top left, we are constantly in the higher end of temperature. So once we start um, fully fitting this place out, we're not going to be able to use the fire braziers and torches because they increase the heat in an area we're going to have to use the ones made from the glowing gloop which have a cooling effect and bring the temperature down within the buildings so until next time from the missus and me here just inside the main gate as the moon zooms across the sky 
it's not goodbye. It's hit subscribe, and we'll see you next time. From the Gazbeard, bye for now.